First off, we're gonna start out by dinking straight ahead. There we go. Nice. Nice. All right. Now let's go cross court a little bit here. Nice. Eh. Oh. All right. You want to switch to the other way here? Here you go. I got a couple extras. Oops, sorry. All right. So what I'm noticing is you were, have you ever had a tennis lesson? No? In tennis, they tell you to take a swing and swing over your shoulder, right? Finish your swing. Have you heard that before? Um, it seems like you're kind of doing something similar here in pickleball, is what I'm seeing when you're dinking is it looks something like this. We're finishing all the way over here. Right? Yeah, so your swing is coming all the way across the shoulder like that, right? But really, when we're only trying to hit this ball less than 14 feet, mm -hmm. how much energy does it take to, to actually hit it that, that soft? Yeah, not a whole lot, right? So really, when I'm hitting, I've got just maybe a, a couple inches of swing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm finishing it when I hit that dink shot, I'm finishing it right here, right? As opposed to everything past this spot is just a little bit of extra motion, right? And when we have extra motion in our swing, it's just gonna be less repeatable. It's not something that we can do as, as consistently. So what I wanna see you do right now is we're gonna dink again, uh -huh. and, and I wanna see you do the absolute bare minimum <laughs> with your paddle. Do the bare minimum, just like I did in high school, okay? Less is more when it comes to pickleball. There you go, nice. Nice and compact. Keep that nice and compact. Don't let that swing get too big. There you go. Let me actually see you pause right after you hit it for a sec. Yeah, let's see it. There you go, that's nice, that's compact. Let me have you set your paddle down for a sec. Now with your, with your right hand, I want you to toss me that ball. Where did your, where'd your follow through end up when you tossed that ball? Yeah, right in front, mm -hmm. right? It didn't end up coming across, no, no. right? So think about this as a, as a more of a push than it is a swing. Yeah, well, toss me one more time. Yeah, right in there. That should be our swing, is like that small six inch sort of movement. Let's try it with the paddle now. It gets a lot harder when we put the paddle in our hand, right? There you go. Keep it a little smaller. There you go, perfect. Nice. So one other thing that I'm noticing with your, with your swing is um, sometimes when you're dinking, right before you're about to hit, 
that wrist kind of breaks a little bit, maybe a little bit too loose. And so when we have, we want to be relaxed, but when we have a, a broken wrist, what happens to my paddle, right? If you push against my paddle here and my wrist is broken, there's not much force behind it, right? So when we have that wrist cocked a little bit, now push against that paddle. There's a lot more resistance to it, right? So when we break that wrist a little bit, we get really vulnerable to, to miss hits, to, to flicking our wrist. So we wanna try and set that a little bit. So set that wrist, um, and it should look the same before and after contact, right? So right there, it came down a little bit. It dropped down just a bit. Think about maybe keeping that paddle pointed upwards the whole time. So you're gonna have to get a little bit lower with your body. So if I need to make, keep my paddle head up, yeah, I gotta get down a little bit more. Now, sometimes when it drops, yep. right, realistically in, in a real game, I'm not, you know, I'm not down like that. I'll get a little bit lazy. Yeah. But for your purposes right now, as you're learning the, the skill, I wanna see you get down there. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's, let's keep that paddle head pointed up. Yep, it's falling down there. There. there you go, that was better. You missed that one, but that was better, yeah. Drop that one a little bit. As you're hitting right at the end, mm -hmm. you're coming here. And then it's... And then it drops right before you're about to hit. So can I think of getting under it? Well, that looks good. Let me see. Let me see you hit it without a ball now, if you don't mind. Like, so, let me see a couple ghost swings. Like that? Yeah. Okay. What you're doing sometimes though, and I don't know if you feel this, is mm -hmm. right before you're about to hit, you're all good, good, right at the last second, oh, yeah. you, you come in and yeah. drop that paddle down. Trick. One of the drills that I actually do sometimes mm -hmm. with, with people is, I make them keep their, I make them, and I think that, I don't remember if this is a drill that we're doing later today, but take your left hand, your pointer finger, mm -hmm and put it at a 90 degree angle with your, with the, where the, the grip meets the paddle. And now we're going to actually like dink like this. So without keeping, without moving that finger, we're gonna dink this way. And it forces you to not break your wrist. It forces you to get down below the level of that ball. That one drops just a bit. No, 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 that was, that was good. That was a nice rally. Those were nice and controlled. Mm -hmm. And then what else happened? What, what I noticed as well is when we kept things compact, first off, you stopped using the, the wrist quite as much, but then also, you didn't even know this, but you stopped following through across your shoulder. We started, we kept it really tight in, and uh, compact, um, which is, like I said, less is more in pickleball. The more repeatable, the simpler we can make this shot, the better. Do I actually dink with another finger on my hand? No, right? But when I'm doing this drill, this is what my shot looks like. And when I'm actually playing pickleball, it looks fundamentally the same this is just a tool to get you to kind of compact that swing a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a couple more here with the finger. Oh. <laughs> so, what I want you to do when we're in this bunched wrist position, or when we drop our, our paddle head down, mm -hmm. we feel like the ball hits our paddle and it shakes your hand a little bit, or it rotates the paddle, or the, the paddle is sliding around in your hand. And people say, well, should I grip the paddle harder? I don't think so. I think it all stems from a strong wrist position. So what I want you to do is, I'm in a, a bunched wrist position. I want you to push against my paddle here. 
and feel how much force there is, right? Now, I'm not gripping it particularly hard. Pull that paddle out of my hand. Right. Okay? <laughs> so now, with, now what I'm going to do, instead of having my wrist broken here, is I'm just going to think of pulling this paddle back towards my face, right? Mm -hmm. Now push against it. It's a lot stronger, yeah. right? Yeah. And feel it and pull it out of my hand. I still have the same yeah, yeah. grip pressure, yeah. right? But I have more force. Imagine, imagine me bench pressing, right? That might be difficult <laughs> to understand, but when, when you bench press, you have your arms below the bar. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you have your wrists broken and you're trying to push that bar up. That's not how it would, how it would go. So that's the same idea as you have better force behind your shots, more stability with your paddle when your wrist is not bunched, mm -hmm. but rather um, in a stronger, more kind of cocked position. Thinking about that paddle making a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. with the forearm here. So the paddle um, grip is kind of at a 90 degree angle with that forearm. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people want to talk about um, grip pressure as well. Mm -hmm. And grip pressure isn't something that I really like to touch on a tremendous amount because people say, well, should I be a three out of 10? Should I be a five out of 10? It depends on your grip strength, yeah, yeah. right? So what I think of is kind of along the same idea. I want you to put your paddle out in front of you mm -hmm. and hold it so loose that it falls. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to start pulling it back towards you. And now I want you to start gripping it only with your, oh, sorry. I want you to pull, start pulling it back towards you by tightening your grip, okay? And now tighten to the point where your forearm muscles start to activate. So we want a grip that is not so loose that it's falling down. We should have our grip tight enough where that paddle starts to come back towards us, but not so tight where my forearm muscles start to activate. That's kind of the, the key, and that's a little bit, that's a different number for everybody. Right, that might be a, a four out of ten grip strength for me. That might be, you know, ten. a two out of ten for you, or a ten out of ten for somebody else. What you said is earlier is, you want to have that relaxed swing. Yeah, yeah. You do, um, but you also need to have a little bit of tension in that in that grip. Now try and keep things nice and compact. Nice. Keep that paddle up a little bit. Lift that ball up and over, lift it. There you go. Give it a little bit more arc. Perfect. A little bit more height. That's all right. Give me a little bit more arc here. You're gonna have to get underneath that ball even more. I wanna see if you can clear this net by a couple feet there. Sorry. A lot of times people say that they think they popped the ball up because they, they think that dinks need to clear the net by an inch to be a good dink. Mm -hmm. But if you ever let, watch higher level pickleball, a lot of the times dinks are crossing the net by a foot. Yeah. We're yeah. giving ourselves some margin. Mm -hmm. Pop-ups are not caused by people say, oh my, my paddle angle was too open or maybe I swung too low to high. Mm -hmm. Pop-ups aren't caused by our paddle angle or our swing trajectory. They're caused by too much power. They're caused by too much distance, right? So I can have a very, very open paddle angle and I can swing low to high, but I didn't pop that ball up, right? So dinking is not about height control. It's about distance control. So I want you to actually work on giving yourself a little bit more arc and trying to drop that ball a little shorter. There you go. Try and put that ball in the front half of that kitchen. There we go, perfect. Nice. Perfect.
There we go. There it is. I like that. I like to see that. Nice. All right, let's bring it in even closer. Come on in, come into the kitchen. Try and get this ball to bounce. Yeah, perfect. As close to the net as possible. Nice. So now do you feel how before you were swinging on kind of a, a flat trajectory, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're swinging on a low plane and your shots, while they might be going low over the net, mm -hmm. they might be going too far, yeah. right? Now you're swinging on a, a little bit more of, a, of an arc trajectory, right? you're swinging a little bit more low to high, the ball is going higher over the net. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of pickleball is, even though it's going a little bit higher over the net, yeah. these are still sh not shots that I can hurt you with. Because they've gone a little higher over the net, mm -hmm. it gives the opportunity to, to let it bounce in the mm -hmm. kitchen. Mm -hmm. Once it bounces, it loses a whole bunch of its, of its height. There we go. And the nice part is, once you have this fundamental down, then you can start to add a little bit more push. You can start to flatten that out a little bit more. There we go. Nice. Oh, that one dropped the wrist a little bit, right? Okay. So, there's a couple things, a couple things to work on there. There's some homework. One of the other things that I noticed when I was hitting drives at you from the baseline mm -hmm. was ready position. Mm -hmm. Where were you, where do you hold, if I'm gonna hit this ball hard at you, <laughs> let's, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm just gonna hit a couple balls hard at you. Come on up to that net. Oh boy. Oh boy is right. All right, let's do this. Here you go. Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, sorry. Tomahawk. There we go. All right. So one of the things that's happening is you're actually in a pretty good, solid, ready position over here. But once I start driving that ball at you, what happens is you're taking that paddle mm -hmm. from here and starting to drop it down. Mm -hmm. But it was in a good height to begin with, right? So yeah. the ball is coming maybe say shoulder high, but you bring the paddle down yeah, yeah. and you are yeah. swinging upwards towards it. Which is okay if the ball, if you need to do that, right? If the ball is down low, I need to swing upwards. But the ball is already up high. We don't need to swing upwards anymore from that spot. So your preparation is starting, say the ball is here. A lot of times your preparation is starting here and you're swinging upwards. Instead, I want you, your preparation, to mirror the height of the ball. So if the ball is here, this is your prep spot, right? Mm -hmm. Ball is here, that's your prep. Yep. Ball is here, that's your prep, right? Yep. So as soon as you see this ball coming over the net, mm -hmm. I want your preparation to be, I'm here, I'm waiting for that ball, and then I'll swing, instead of upwards, mm -hmm. I'll swing through the court. Meaning like, you're swinging to hit that baseline. Yep. Yep. So instead of starting here and swinging upwards, yep. We're gonna start here and swing out. Does that make sense? I think so, I think I got it. So when that ball is coming, yep. 
I want your, your prep to basically just match where that ball is coming to you. Okay. Does that make sense? Nice. Oh. Hey, that's okay. It's, it's going to be different, right? Your preparation was actually good, right? But you did your same old habit. From here, yeah. you were right behind the ball, but you swung up and missed, right? Instead, you had a good preparation, but swing through, right? Yeah. Instead of swinging on an upwards line, right? Swing on a flat line. Okay. The nice part about that is if we mistime things a little bit, like say, say we're a little bit late mm -hmm. and you're swinging on a flat path, mm -hmm. you're still gonna meet the ball in the right spot. Mm -hmm. If you're a little early, you're gonna meet the ball in the right spot. But if you're just barely catching the ball then and your timing is off just a little bit, yep. then you're going to probably miss hit it. Um, yeah, or miss it or, or something. So when we swing on a, on a flat kind of linear plane, then we tend to make the best contact. It, it tends to be the most repeatable. So try and mirror that ball and swing outwards. Nice. Perfect. Nice, I like it. I don't care if you miss right now. Okay. You're working on that. Uh-oh. <laughs> nice. All right. Here's a high one for you. There we go. I think you're hitting to me a little bit better than you were before. Okay. Um, I think you do have a little bit more control than before. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I expect. Um, but it takes time on your own too. Nice shot. There we go, one more. That prep was a little bit down low again, yeah, right? Mirror that ball. Nice, there we go, that was perfect. That was perfect. So I think one of the things that sometimes people don't account for as well is as the ball gets higher, uh -huh. our contact point changes, meaning if we're making contact down here, mm -hmm. it might be at this point compared to our body. Mm -hmm. But as that ball is getting higher, it's easier for us to make contact further out in front, Yeah. right? So my contact point for a, if we take a look at this on a, like on a, on a flat plane, if I'm making contact with a low ball, it might be here. But as that ball comes up a little bit higher, I'm making contact further out in front of my body. It's just a little bit more comfortable for us to kind of do that. Yeah. For me to make contact here, feels normal on a low ball. Yeah. But when I come up to this spot and try and keep the same contact point, I feel like I'm about to throw my shoulder out, right? <laughs> so know that as this ball gets higher, our contact point actually changes a little bit as well. A little more out in front, there you go. Nice. Hey, there we go. That was a good, that was a good swing. Sorry. Hey, there's our longest rally. Love it. Let me see a couple of, of, of overheads. I'll feed you a few. All right, hey, that wasn't so bad. I think there's something, something to work on, but it's consistent at least. So there's, there's a couple things that I'm seeing here. Okay. Um, first off, if you ever watch a, a baseball player 
throw a pitch. Let's say that they're, if they're a pitcher, right? They don't stand here and throw here, right? With their chest kind of facing towards the, the home plate. Can I grab that ball from you? They take these big, huge windups and they get their whole body weight into it and they are really using their shoulders and they're coming around and throwing towards home plate. That way they're not only just using their arm, but they're also using rotational power. That involves the core and um, you can use the legs better that way. You can drive through the legs, you can drive through the core. And then finally, the last piece is that arm. So right now what you're doing is you're pitching the home plate here, right? Yeah. And we need to get you using your whole body, right? Okay. I'm like 135 pounds soaking wet, but I can hit the pickleball hard because I rotate, because I get power from my legs and my core and my, my bigger muscles. Um, if I was just using my arm, I wouldn't be able to, to, uh, to hurt a fly. One of the ways that we, we do this, one of the easiest fixes, and one of the things that I learned from tennis is, what I want you to do is, as that ball is coming up to you, I want you to actually point at it with your left arm, okay? Yeah, because what happens right away is, when you do that, you automatically start to rotate a little bit. So point towards that ball as it's coming towards you. Nice. Point, point, point. Let me get that other hand nice up high, high and tall. It's gonna change things a little bit. All right, think about your turning, right? Yeah. Think about showing me your shoulder here, right? There we go, yeah, it's a new concept. But so stay here and don't think about like opening up because I think then your tendency is going to be to kind of revert back to your old way. Yeah. Think about keeping that other hand up while you hit. Okay. All right, let's see it. There you go. Nice shot. Hey, there you go. That's from before. Nice. Nice. A little more shoulder turn there. I like it. You're turning but you're letting that ball come kind of down towards the armpit, which I'm, I'm screwing around with your timing and stuff. It's, it's normal for, for things to, for you try and fix one thing, but then something else kind of compensates, right? And so what's happening is now you're letting that, that ball sort of come down a little bit too much. Still think about trying to reach up and get it near the top of your reach. I'd say think about not hitting it downwards, but think about hitting it through the court. Show me that, that shoulder and try and reach up and hit it towards the top of your, near the top of your, uh, your reach. There you go. Get that shoulder turn. There you go. There you go. Nice. That had some pop to it. Let me see if you can get, let me have you start prepped up. And you see where, where my elbow is compared to yours, right? When, when you're starting to hit these overheads, you're down in here, right? When I'm starting to hit these overheads, my elbow's raised a little bit. So now I don't have quite as long of a way to go as if I was starting here, right? It's tougher to time when I'm starting from all the way down here and I gotta come up. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm starting here, it's a nice, it's a little bit more compact. So maybe instead of, don't worry about the other stuff that I said now, just try and think about starting that elbow up higher. All right, let me see you just start in that prep position. Turned, arm up there, elbow up a little higher. Think about maybe elbow is at around shoulder height there. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, I like that. That works. Start it out. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Uh-oh. We'll take it. <laughs> one more. One more, one more. Nice. Uh-oh. So, what happened on that one? Do you know? I think what happened was, not that you tried to get it low, I think that might have been a consequence of when I see this other hand come down, mm -hmm. when we start to open up or yeah. bring this other hand down, then we also bring our head down and we either hit the top of our paddle, if we hit our paddle at all, right? So this off arm actually plays a, a really, really important part. If our arm comes down, our chest collapses, our head comes down, and we don't get the same sort of, of power, the same sort of consistency. So when we are hitting these overheads, we wanna have our, our chest pointed up towards the ball, keep that hand up there until after we hit. So I think what happened was, on that one in particular, this hand came down, everything else followed with it. Yep. Keep it together. Keep it together, Kaylee. Keep it together. Nice. A one, one shot wonder. Let came, that elbow came down just a bit. Keep that up, there you go. Nice. Two more, I, I keep saying two more. Get that prep up there. Nice. Nice. There we go. Eh. That did not look, uh, that looks kind of painful off the finger. But the, the big key to overheads is, I'd say if I had to simplify this, two big keys. First is a nice early preparation. As soon as you see that ball go up, get to your, they call this like trophy position, right? Okay. Um, as soon as you see that ball up, get into position. And second and most important is this offhand plays a huge and important role in a successful overhead. Make sure if this hand goes, everything goes. After you make contact, just let that arm go wherever is, is comfortable. I wasn't noticing anything with your follow through in particular. If you feel like you're stopping, that's, it's gonna, really the biggest thing is it's probably going to hurt you long term, meaning like, it's just a lot of stress on your body, on your shoulder and on your forearm to try and stop a hard swing as opposed to letting it yeah, letting it go. Two more, yeah, you want two more? All right, two more. If you insist, Kaylee, if you insist. Two more, trophy position. Oh, there it is. All right, you only get one more. Nice. All right. Make sure to check out the APP Academy if you'd like to learn from me in person or zanenavratilpickleball.com to see my teaching schedule.